Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Tom West, and I hope you will push the little red subscribe and subscribe to this channel and share this video with someone else that could be a blessing to them. I call this message a Christmas response. We know that Jesus came to earth as the Savior and as God with us. We covered that in the Christmas message. Jesus is God's intervention in history on behalf of mankind. So how do we respond to Jesus? How does mankind respond to Jesus? We can learn how to respond to him by taking a look at the history of the guys we know as the wise men. And that history is found in Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. I want to read those scriptures with you. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And they quoted Micah 5, verse 2. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, and that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Great response to King Jesus. Let's take a look at the narrative of this history. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea while Herod was king over the area. Three wise men, probably more like magicians, something like that, came to Jerusalem looking for Jesus, who they refer to as the one who has been born king of the Jews. The wise men pointed out that they saw his star in the east, and they were coming to worship him. Now, Herod the king of the area, was thinking about political power and preserving it for himself when he heard that someone had been born king of the Jews. In other words, this threatened his political power. He thought it didn't really, but he thought it did. So Herod got a group of priests and scribes together and asked them where this king might be born. They quote Micah 5, 2, which identifies Bethlehem in that land of Judah as the place where this new king would come from. Next, Herod put together a meeting with the wise men again and asked them about the star that they followed and when it appeared. And he told them, go to Bethlehem, find the child, and then come and tell me where he is so I can come and worship him too. Later in the chapter, the wise men are warned not to tell Herod about the, where the baby was, but instead just go back to their own country. When the wise men did not come back to Herod and tell him where the baby was, you know what he did? He had all the male children in that area, two years and younger, killed. And he did that po to protect his political power. Folks, people will do the most vile things to protect their political power. Killing little boys two years and younger in a whole area to protect your political power is, a, is an evil thing to do. And he did an evil thing. Well, these wise men followed the star... And they found the Christ child in Bethlehem. And the Bible says that they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy because they found the, this new king of Israel, the savior of the world. When the wise men found the child, he was with his mother Mary. 
And listen to this. They fell down and worshiped him. And they brought treasures with them to give to the king of the Jews as gifts. Those treasures were gold and frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh were at least as treasured as gold because they were the best commodities that anyone could find to give to a baby who was destined to be a king. We assume that there were three wise men because there are three gifts, okay? What could we learn from these guys about how to respond to Jesus for all times? Certainly the times we live in now, we need advice about how to respond to Jesus now. Their basic response to Jesus was to fall down and worship him. That's how we should respond to Jesus today. <clears throat> Have four power lessons about worshiping Christ from the book of Matthew that we can learn. First, at Matthew 2.11, part of our text today, and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshiped him. First, worship is about surrender. It's about surrender. Notice that the wise men fell down and worshiped him. To fall down in front of someone is to elevate that person above you and lower yourself below them. Worship is always about elevating Jesus Christ over us and bringing, our, bringing ourselves under him. Why is worship about elevating Christ and lowering ourselves? Well, there's two basic things that you always have to remember. First, he is creator God who spoke the entire world into existence in six days in Genesis chapter 1. We have, that's the history of that. Then in John 1, 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word that spoke the world into existence became flesh and lived among men. Jesus is God, the word that created all that is by his godness and is above us as God himself. Second, Jesus was raised from the dead first. First guy from the raised from the dead. Colossians 1.18 says, he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, that in everything, in everything, he might have the preeminence, that he might be preeminent. Jesus is preeminent in all things because he's the first to be raised from the dead. Since Jesus is creator God and the firstborn from the dead, he is high and lifted up and we are below him in a posture of worship when we get it right. I find that I have to put myself in that posture daily, or you know what I do? I get myself in the way and negate worship, and I think that's probably common to humanity. My advice is to get up each day and re-surrender under Jesus in an attitude of worship. It's the only way the Christian life works. Second, when Satan tempted Jesus to worship him, uh, Jesus responded in Matthew 4.10. He said this, you shall worship the Lord your God and, 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 you, shall, and, only, and you shall serve him only. Uh, second, worship is about serving God. Uh, imagine being surrendered to any king and then being asked to serve him and say, no, I'm just surrendered to you, but I don't serve you. Now, that, how do you think the average king would respond to such a notion? It's nonsense. doesn't make any sense at all. If you're in a posture of worship before King Jesus, it's not a question of whether you serve him. It's a question of how you serve him. So in what way do you serve God? Probably the answer to that is, what things am I not able to get away from? What things am I not able to get away from? And I don't know how to explain that to you except to tell you how it works for me. Be just as honest and transparent as I can about how that's, that works in my life. When I got serious about the Lord, <clears throat> I saw myself, and I still see myself now almost 50 years later, as a preacher. That's how I saw myself then. It's how I see myself now. I spent over three years doing youth ministry. During that time, I saw myself as a preacher working with youth. And then for 27 years, I was the lead pastor in three different churches. I was their preacher. That's how I've always seen myself. Then I sold fours for 13 years and nine months, actually. 13 years and four months of that time was spent at Sanderson Ford in Glendale, Arizona. You know what they did? They called me the preacher there. In fact, on my business card, they said, Tom, the preacher West, I've kept one of them around so you could see it. 
Tom the Preacher West. They put it on my business card. I really didn't ask him to. They said I should do that, so I did. Um, that's that's how I was seen there. I was seen as a preacher. In August 2018, I moved back to Porterville, California, and started writing articles for the Porterville Recorder. One of my old friends uh, sent me a message, and he said, he just thanked me for preaching, he said, in the recorder. That's because I was preaching in the written word in the recorder. In July of 2020, I started my YouTube channel. They call it Life in the God Lane. You can find that on YouTube, Life in the God Lane. And as I write this, I have 42 sermons on my YouTube channel. So I position myself under Jesus as my Lord, and I want to live a life of worship to him. And that means that I serve God. And I guess I'm a preacher. That's that's where I've come out. I'm a preacher. That's where I always end up. So my question for you is this. How has God called you to serve under Jesus in your worship? What you do to serve him answers that question. It's And it'll always be the thing you just cannot seem to escape. Matthew 9 verse 18 says this. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Third, worship goes with asking for help. Listen, folks, that's a part of the Christian life. Worship is goes along with asking Jesus for help. When this ruler knelt before Jesus asking him to raise his daughter from the dead, he was in a posture of worship. In fact, he was worshiping Jesus as he asked for help. Guess what Jesus did? He went to the guy's house, took his daughter by the hand, and raised her from the dead. When, when I ask when I ask God for help, I do so with an attitude of worship. I ask him for help all the time. It is a regular practice in prayer to ask Jesus for help. I need his help, and he wants to help. Don't forget that. He wants to help. In fact, he wants us to need his help, and he wants us to ask for his help. You know why? Because he wants to help us. That's why. Here's what I say to God every time I open up to him in prayer, which I do several times a day. I praise you and worship you. I surrender. I choose to live under Jesus as Lord in the comfort of the Holy Spirit under the sovereignty of Yahweh, the name of God. I put myself under Jesus in worship. And then I ask him to intervene in my life at several points during my prayer time. And you know what? He helps. His power is absolutely amazing. So put yourself under Jesus in worship and ask him for help. It's what he wants you to do, and he wants to bless you and blow your socks off, actually. Fourth, after Jesus rescued Peter, when Peter sank after walking on the water, Jesus took his eyes off Jesus and he sank. Then Jesus got in the boat with the other disciples in the middle of a storm that these guys were totally convinced would sink the boat and cost them their lives. And you know what happened when he got in the boat? The wind and the storm ceased. It just ceased. It was miraculous. And Matthew 14, 33 gives us the disciples' response. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Fourth, worship is your response to God's help. It's what you do when God helps you, and he'll help you all the time. I had brain surgery in October 2014. had a brain bleed, and I, I wasn't sure what happened to me, but when I was told and figured out that I'd survived and was going to recover, my response was thanksgiving and worship. When, when the Lord intervenes on your behalf, your response should be to worship him. Don't forget to thank him. Don't forget to worship him. Our response to Jesus showing up should be the same as the, as the wise men's response when he showed up and they found him. Worship. That's how we respond to Jesus. So when we worship, we will, one, be surrendered. Two, we will serve God. Third, we will ask for his help. And then we will assume an attitude of worship when he shows up and helps us which he does all the time. When I had my brain surgery, <clears throat> I put myself under the care of Paul LaProd Jr., medical doctor. I was in total surrender to his care. 
And you know what? He took care of me and did brain surgery and healed me with a lot of help from God. You got to see worship like putting yourself under the care of Jesus, the great physician. Treat him like a doctor that you have to trust with all of you to care for all of you. And he will care for you. Worship. It is your Christmas response. We ought to live that way every day for the rest of this coming year, 2021. I'm trying to figure out what happened in 1967. But live your life under an attitude of worship for Jesus. Let that be your Christmas response and just keep it going. Would you pray with me? Father, speak to our hearts, change us from the inside out, put us in an attitude of worship, and then intervene in our lives because we've surrendered our life to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to intervene on our behalf, to pay the price for our sin at the cross, to be raised from the dead so that he defeats utterly and completely death in our life. And thank you for him intervening for us. Now, God, help us worship you and be surrendered to Jesus and then do great, great things in our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and send this video to someone else so it can be helpful to them. God bless you, and I'll see you next Saturday, if not before.